Happy Thursday. We're going to continue on talking about how we get our energy. We'll do a quick review from yesterday. We talked about three different organisms or types of organisms. We talked about producers like plants that make their own energy. We talked about consumers like you and me who eat their own energy. And we talked about decomposers who break down uh, the dead organisms to release the energy. We ended talking about the difference between food chain, which is one possible path to the food web, which is reality, uh, putting all these different things together. Today we're going to talk about a food or what we call the energy pyramid to explain why we have to have so many different sources. You've got your notes sitting here. Let's rock and roll. When you study a food chain, you can see the path that energy takes from producer to top consumer. But a food chain doesn't tell you anything about how much energy actually moves up from link to link. Not all energy a green plant captures from sunlight is passed to other organisms. The plant uses some of the energy for life processes and some of the energy is lost to heat. Number one in your notes, that's especially true of animals, obviously, guys. When we move, muscles release heat. Um, this is true of all levels of the food chain. A snake uses energy as it slithers across the ground in search of prey. A wood mouse uses energy as it digs a burrow. Organisms must use energy to grow, move, and reproduce. Number two in your notes, they keep pounding that into your head, what it takes to be a, a living organism. As a result, only part of the energy is available to the next level of the food chain. An energy pyramid... Uh, I forgot to highlight number three in your notes. Only part of the energy, right? Okay. Cruising over here. An energy pyramid shows how energy moves through an ecosystem. See how the energy pyramid has a larger base that gets smaller as it nears the top. That's because more energy is available at the lower levels. Okay. So you're down here with an energy pyramid. The amount of available energy gets smaller the higher the levels because most of the energy has been used by organisms for life processes or is given off as heat. Only energy that is stored in the tissues of organisms can be passed from one level to the next. That is about 10% of the energy. At one level, a food chain moves to the next higher one. So number five, you know, those guys, only 10% of the energy is moving up. So you got this little... Uh, yellow necked mouse, of all the energy it gets, it's using 90% of it just to stay alive or to stay warm. So when a snake comes along and eats the mouse, mouse it gets about 10% of the energy it needs from that mouse. 10% of those mouse is stored energy. So that's why the more we go up, guys, the more these things have to consume. Why? Because it has decreasing amounts of energy. So we're always like, man, it's good to be on top of the food chain because the top of the food chain gets to eat so many things underneath the food chain, except it needs to eat so many of them because it's only getting 10% of the energy. The other problem for top of the food chain is the increasing number of organisms. The farther down you are, the more organisms there are to eat. So like a mouse usually has plenty of grass and nuts and berries and seeds to eat. Then there's less mice, less snakes, and even less owls. And so the top of the food chain, guys, is obviously your top predator, but it's a challenge too, okay? Um, organisms at higher levels do not need less energy. They must eat many organisms to get the energy they need. For that reason, many organisms are at the base of the pyramid, but only one, the top predator, would be at the top. Most food chains have no more than five links. That's because the amount of energy remaining by the fifth link is only a very small percentage of what was available at the first link. So it's not 10% plus 10% plus 10%, guys. It's 10% times 10%. So it's one tenth, one hundredth, one thousandth, one ten thousandth, one hundred thousandths of the amount of energy down here to by the time you get to the top one. All right, let's fill in your blanks. The lower an organism is on the pyramid, the more of them there are. The higher an organism is on the pyramid, the less of them there are. Most food chains do not have more than five links because there's just not enough energy uh, as far as what those top producer, 
top consumers would have to eat. Okay, now the other thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to a couple days ago when we were talking about harmful substances and how animals almost became extinct. I think that was in lesson one on Tuesday. Um, we're back. This is talking about the chemicals in a food chain. Energy isn't the only thing passed along in a food chain. Harmful substances can pass up through the food chain too. So your number eight, uh, number nine here in your notes. We're passing the harmful substances of the food chain. Why? You can see in the energy pyramid that many organisms at the base of the pyramid support fewer organisms toward the top. When an organism eats harmful substances, they can be stored in the organ's tissue. Okay, so it's stored in the tissue. That's obviously where its energy is stored too, guys. We had that from over here where it's stored up here in, in its tissue. So um, its muscle reserves, that's what an animal is really eating, its muscle. Um, that's where we're storing the harmful substances too. All right, find out where I am. There we go. And organisms, as organisms higher up in the food chain eat the many organisms below, they also eat the harmful substances stored in the tissue. As a result, the amount of harmful substances becomes more and more concentrated as you move up the pyramid. As the concentration increases, the effect of the substance can become more harmful. It can even become deadly. Okay? So right here, they can become deadly, guys. The example of that is what we talked about with extinct. That's our bald eagle. So if you remember way back in our book, we were cruising through here. And we got this paragraph of the bald eagle. What caused it? It caused by this DDT chemical. And so what happens is DDT was a pesticide that we put on crops so that bugs wouldn't eat the crops we were growing. Then that got washed into the water system. And then the fish started getting it in the water system. So this would be a fish here, guys. They're getting very little of that DDT. Then the eagle would come along and scoop the fish out and start eating fish. And the eagle was the top one. And so because it ate this one fish and it ate this one fish and it ate this one fish, it's inheriting all of um, those chemicals. And the body couldn't get rid of them. So it was just storing more and more of those deadly substances. And one of the harmful effects of DDT is it ruined uh, reproduction. The eggs weren't coming out as hard eggs. They were coming out as soft and so the baby inside couldn't survive. Now, obviously, uh, we figured that out eventually and put the bald eagle on the endangered species list and banned the use of DDT as a pesticide. And today, bald eagles are doing really good. But the example of that, of how those harmful substances move up the food chain, would be uh, DDT. Okay, your extra credit for the day. DDT equals soft eagle eggs. That's how it harmed them. Made their eggs soft. Is one way it harmed it. Harmed them in other ways, but DDT made their eggs soft. All right, six. Have a great day and blessings on the worksheet. Think very carefully. A couple of the questions come from this little paragraph here for the true false on the back side. Have a day.